Hey babe, what's going on? Can I come over? I missed you so much tonight. You mean right now? It's almost 11 p.m., George. What are you doing this late out on a Wednesday night? What do you mean what am I doing? Don't you want to see your future husband? We were just out with the guys, having a good time. You know how it gets, right? Just a few beers to unwind after a long day at the office. We just finished up this epic game of pool. And I was thinking about heading home until I remembered something. That depends. Have you been drinking? Because if you have even a drop of alcohol in your system, you can forget about coming over. Drinking? Of course not. Why would you even think that? Come on, babe. Don't be like that. No? That sounds an awful lot like you are slurring your words, George. You know the deal. You can't come over if you're drunk. I have to get up early for work tomorrow and babysit my niece after school. I don't need the added stress of taking care of you, too. But babe, come on. I do, too. It works out great. We both have to get up early. So wouldn't it be easier if I just crashed here? Think about it. Less commuting, more cuddling. You always say that and then show up blasted out of your mind. It's late and I don't have the time or energy to deal with you when you're drunk. Go home, George. Get some sleep. We can see each other tomorrow. After work, okay? Okay, okay. Fine. But I'm just saying. I'm gonna get super lonely without you tonight. Sometimes I feel like you don't even want me around. Is that it? Do you have second thoughts about marrying me? I'm marrying you, idiot. Of course I do. But right now you're reeking of alcohol and I don't have the energy to deal with you stumbling around in the middle of the night when I'm trying to get some sleep. Oh, come on. Please, don't be like that. My place is so far away and this couch looks comfy. The answer is no, George. And for the last time, my name is Marissa, not Kev. I'm already in bed, wrapped up, nice and cozy. Are you sure? We can cuddle all night and I'll even get up when you do in the morning. You won't even have to hear the alarm. Yeah, sure. Like the last time you got to my place wasted and passed out on the couch, promising to make breakfast but sleeping through my alarms. And the last time before that, do you black out so badly that you forget you say that every single time? You never stick to it either. I'm tired of rolling over for you when you're belligerent and hungover. Marisa, I just... I want to see you. We've been so busy with work and the wedding prep. I barely get to see my beautiful fiancé. Yeah, well, that's what happens when we both have jobs and don't live together. We're getting married next month anyway. Soon you'll see me all the time. It feels so far away. It wouldn't be this bad if someone said she was okay living together before the wedding. Now you're just being ridiculous. I never said that. We never talked about it. You just kept coming over and crashing with me. You always said you preferred it that way. I don't remember saying that. Maybe it's because you're drunk. George, I'm going to bed. Please get home safe and drink some water while you're at it. Come on, Marisa. Hey. Hey, babe. I'm so sorry about last night. I woke up with a pounding headache and a vague sense of dread. The last thing I remember is the guys buying round after round. And then, nothing. Did I do anything stupid again? I appreciate your apology. You do that a lot, though. It's starting to worry me. Is this just who you are, George? The guy who shows up at my door drunk in the middle of the week, then forgets everything the next day? No, no. I swear. I don't get drunk that often. Last night was just a special occasion, you know. The guys wanted to celebrate my, uh, almost last days of freedom. They threw me a whole secondary bachelor party ride there at the bar. They wouldn't let me pay for a single drink. Wouldn't you know it? The best part? I somehow managed to stumble home at 1am and still drag myself into work on time. See? Totally responsible. One, you reek of stale beer. And two... You were texting me at 11 p.m. practically begging to crash here. Just need a place to rest my weary head, you said. Funny how that changes when the morning light hits. Right, right. The texts. Okay, so maybe I did have a few more drinks than I planned. But hey, that reminds me. You don't have any plans on Friday, right? Let's go out for a real celebratory dinner. Just the two of us. My treat, of course. To make up for last night. I wish you'd asked me for that yesterday, George. I just made plans. 
What do you mean you have plans? With who? Why would you be spending time with someone else the night before our wedding? Uh, sorry that I want to hang out with my mom. She actually called and asked me to come get lunch with her and, shocker, your mom too. They're planning some kind of girls day out. Whoa, what? Why would you want to do that? Sounds like torture. I don't know, maybe it's because I would like to have a good relationship with my mother-in-law someday. Especially since we're about to become a family. Is that so crazy? Ouch, you're moody today. Look, if you don't want to go out with me on Friday, that's fine. But you don't need to snap at me. Maybe it's because someone cut me up last night with their drunken antics and is now trying to control who I spend my time with. You can come if you want, George. I never said you couldn't. Gross. No, I don't want to spend any more time with your mom or mine than I have to. They can have their little bonding session without me. Jeez, George, that's your mom. Listen, I'll just text you when we're done. We can go out after, okay? But frankly, after last night, I might need some serious convincing. All right, sounds good. But seriously, lighten up a little. It's just lunch. Besides, what could possibly go wrong? Hey, George, I just finished up work. Remember that new rom-com we were talking about seeing? I finally got tickets and there's a showing in like an hour. Wanna grab some popcorn and cuddle up? Sorry, babe. I just, uh, met up with the guys at the bar. They were already a few rounds in. And you know how it is. Once they get started... Again? It seems like every time I suggest doing something together lately, you're mysteriously glued to a bar stool. What's that supposed to mean? Don't you trust me to have a drink with the guys every now and then? It's not like I'm out here getting wasted every night. Well, it certainly feels like it, George. You've just been out drinking with them a lot lately. You're supposed to be moving in with me in two weeks and marrying me in four. But you haven't shown me any signs that you're preparing for either of those things. Is everything okay? Are you having second thoughts? Second thoughts? What? No way, babe. I wouldn't miss marrying you for the world. Besides, isn't that what I just did? I called the caterer yesterday to finalize the menu. Hold on a second. Your mom called the caterer yesterday. You know, the woman who lives three states away and hasn't even met my dog yet? Well, it's the same thing if you think about it. We talk about the menu together, and she just offered to handle it. You know your mom can be a little... overbearing sometimes. Overbearing? George, we talked about wanting the wedding to be a collaboration, something that reflects both of us. And I'm packing, for the record. I've been slowly collecting boxes and decluttering for weeks. Yeah, well, of course you are. You're way more organized than me, that's for sure. But don't worry, I'm excited about that too. The wedding's so soon. We'll be leaving together like a real husband and wife in no time. Honeymoon in the Bahamas? Just the two of us. Can't wait. Exactly. I hope you've started to pack your stuff, George. Moving will take some time, especially if you plan on bringing everything you own. My place isn't quite as spacious as yours. Wait, what? Your place? I thought we were moving into my apartment. It's bigger. Closer to work. We talked about this months ago, George. My house is already set up and it's close to my mom's house. You know, she's gone into chemotherapy treatments, right? Oh, yeah. Of course. Look, I'm so sorry. I completely forgot. You're such a good daughter to be there for her during this difficult time. Thanks, babe. I appreciate it. It's a scary time for her, and I want to be there for her as much as I can. Besides, wouldn't it be easier to just stay at my place for now? Less moving hassle, you know? Sure, sure, of course. Whatever works for you. She's gonna be a part of my family soon, too. The least I can do is help you take care of her. Thanks, babe. I appreciate it. Listen, the movie tickets are going to waste if we don't hurry. How about we reschedule for another night? You can come over and help me pack for the move? Of course. Oh, the guys are ordering another round. I promise I'll start packing this weekend. My Fridays are always too busy for work. They drag on forever. These reports just pile up. You know how it is, honey. Yeah, about that. We should talk about how much you've been drinking lately, George. It seems like every Friday night turns into a marathon at the bar with the guys. Isn't there anything else you'd rather be doing, especially with the wedding just a month away? What do you mean? The guys are just trying to have a good time before I'm... 
I mean, before we tie the knot, you know? Celebrate my last hooray as a single man and all that. Well, tied down? Glad to know that's how you see it, George. Is this just a prison sentence for you? Because if you're having doubts, we can talk about them. No, no, that's not what I meant at all. You're the woman of my dreams. The future misses whatever. The point is, I'm excited to get married. It's just... The guys, they're all getting a little sentimental, you know. We've known each other since high school. It doesn't matter. They'll get over it. But frankly, George, I'm just worried about your health. That's all. Your liver cannot survive on a steady diet of bar food and cheap beer. I know, I know. Look, I'll cut back. I promise. I wouldn't want to miss out on anything with you, especially not our honeymoon in the Bahamas. Think about it. White sand beaches. Crystal clear water. My point exactly. Your health isn't just about the honeymoon, George. It's about building a life together. A life where you're healthy enough to keep up with me. To maybe even start a family someday. I know, I know, you're right. I promise I'll be cutting back soon. Especially when we're married. No more late nights at the bar. I swear. Tomorrow, I'll send you pics of my packing boxes to prove I'm getting ready. How's that for a start? I've been waiting for an hour. You said the truck would be here by noon and the movers by two. Do you know when you'll be able to get here or should I just start loading the boxes myself? Right. Yeah, so listen, there's a bit of a situation. I can't make it. The truck rental place had some kind of computer glitch. And apparently, they don't have any vehicles available today. Huh? We agreed you'd be moving today. We even color-coded the boxes based on which room they go in. This is the day we were supposed to finally be living together, remember? Funny story. About that, see, I'm not even close to being ready. There are still half-unpacked boxes from my last apartment scattered everywhere. And most of my clothes are still hanging in the closet. Funny. You had weeks to get ready, George. Weeks where you promised you'd be packing and decluttering. It's not like this all just magically appeared overnight. Hey, weeks where I had to work a full-time job and deal with all the wedding prep stuff, you know. Wedding favors, seating charts. The caterer keeps changing the menu on me. It's been stressful. Okay, now you're definitely joking, right? I've been doing everything for this wedding. From the venue to the flowers, the decorations, even the freaking cake tasting. I've been handling it all. All you've been doing, apparently, is drinking with your friends every night. Well, look. My friends keep inviting me out to celebrate the bachelor life before it's over. And it would be rude if I said no, right? They're all getting a little sentimental, you know. But what about your soon-to-be wife, huh? Seems like you've been a lot more available for sentimental goodbyes with your buddies than for getting ready to start a new life with me. What's that supposed to mean? Of course I care about you. You're the whole reason for the wedding, aren't you? It means I feel like you care more about your friends than about me and about our future together. This move was supposed to be a symbol of our commitment, a new chapter. Instead, I feel like I'm the only one who's been taking it seriously. Marisa, I'm so sorry. I don't want you to feel that way. It's not like I don't care. It's just... Then please, George, please start packing. We have two weeks until the wedding. Two weeks until we're supposed to say I do. We were supposed to be moved in together by now, getting used to living in the same space, building a life together. I will. I promise. Can you forgive me? I'll clear my schedule and cancel any more celebrations with the guys. Are you going to take me seriously from now on? This isn't just about moving boxes, George. This is about building trust, about showing me that you're committed to our future together. Of course. Consider it done. This wedding is happening, and we're going to have the best life together. You'll see. Now, let me call the rental company again and see if they can squeeze us in somehow. Maybe with a bigger bribe. And, uh, where are you? What's up? Buttercup? Really? Buttercup? After tonight, the only thing sweet about me is the frosting clinging to this ruined dress. Yeah, it's our wedding night. And you're all gray and stormy. What gives? Everyone's having a good time. I'm so glad you think that I'm not. 
I'm going home, George, so I don't have to look at you bumbling idiots anymore, huh? This wedding was supposed to be a celebration of our love, a promise for our future together. Instead, it's turned into some drunken frat party fueled by your friend's bad behavior. You can't do that. Do you know how embarrassed I'll be if my bride walks out on me? Oh, surely not as embarrassed as I am now that your friends went and pushed me into the cake like some kind of cruel prank. Do you have any idea how much we paid for that three-tier masterpiece? Not to mention the hours I spent picking out the perfect design. All ruined because your friends couldn't hold their liquor. Oh, that. You're not still mad about that, are you? They were just having fun, trying to lighten the mood. Do you have any idea how much we paid for that cake? Not only that, your friends are wasted and ruined. The dress I paid thousands for with buttercream frosting smeared all over it in front of everyone. Mm. You need to loosen up, babe? It's a party, you say? It's a wedding. Our wedding. A sacred ceremony that marks the beginning of our life together. Not an excuse for your friends to get blackout drunk and disrespect your wife. Yeah. Our wedding. Where my friends can drink as much as they want and celebrate with a happy couple. That's not the purpose of a wedding, George. Maybe if you weren't so wasted yourself, you'd understand that I am humiliated. And honestly, I think our friends and family are too. You clearly didn't see how dead silent the venue went when they shoved me into the cake. Everyone was shocked. Oh, is that why your friends started to leave? You made everyone get out because you were a little dirty. Great. I guess I can thank you for ruining the wedding. I had to stand there and watch my bride make a scene and vanish on me. I certainly hope you're not going to be like this for the rest of our marriage. I won't, since we're basically history now. What does that mean? It means I ripped our marriage certificate in two. After that incredible display of disrespect, the broken promises, the blatant disregard for my feelings, I can't be married to you anymore. This piece of paper doesn't hold a candle to the vows we just took. Vows you seem to have forgotten the moment the ceremony ended. But I didn't even do anything. They were just messing around, trying to have some fun. Exactly, George. You just laughed at me. Stood there like a statue while your friends shoved their idea of fun down my throat. Instead of supporting me or scolding them for treating your wife like a birthday cake, you giggled like a kindergartner who just got away with coloring on the walls. And that's not even taking into account every other promise you've broken over the last few months. Remember when you swore you'd cut back on the drinking? Apparently, that promise went the way of your supposed commitment to packing and moving in with me. Whoa, where's this all coming from? We were having a good time. It was our wedding night. Our wedding night? A night that should have been about celebrating our love, our future together. Instead, it turned into a drunken spectacle where your friends felt free to humiliate me. And you were too busy getting wasted to even notice. This isn't news, George. I've been telling you for months that your drinking is a problem. That it creates distance between us. But you never listened. Fine. I've done a lot of stuff I should apologize for. But you're not really walking out just after we got married, are you? We can fix this, you know? We just need to talk. Uh, yeah, I am. I said I do to a man who promised to respect me, cherish me, and build a life together. The man standing in front of me right now seems more interested in the bottom of a beer glass than anything else. I got humiliated on my wedding day, George, and my husband couldn't even stand up for me. What kind of marriage is that supposed to be? It sounds like you're just being self-conscious. Everyone makes mistakes while they're drunk. It was just a prank. A little out of hand, maybe. But nothing to throw away our entire future over. Yes, but no one goes as far as embarrassing their bride in front of everyone we know. What is wrong with you? This wasn't some harmless prank, George. It was a deliberate act of disrespect, a sign that maybe you don't take our commitment as seriously as I do. We'd had a little too much to drink. It wasn't that big of a deal. Oh my god, this again? You are killing your liver, George. All you do is drink. You blame everything, every little thing on drinking. As if it somehow absolves you from making those mistakes. Being drunk does not excuse you from being uncountable for your actions. I know that more than anyone. I used to drink a lot in college. 
I made a lot of mistakes that I had to learn how to take responsibility for. Now, I know that it's possible to not cross those boundaries when you drink, especially not at a wedding, one of the most critical events in our life together. I get it. You hate people who drink. But is this really the answer? Can't we just talk about it? No, George. I hate people who use drinking as an excuse for crossing boundaries. Like you, apparently. This isn't about a few beers gone bad. This is about a pattern of behavior, a pattern you refuse to acknowledge. So I'm done trying to fix what's broken. Hey, no. Come down there. We can fix this. Relationships take work. You know that. We just need to communicate. To figure out where things went wrong. We actually cannot fix this, George. Not this time. The trust is gone, shattered like the overpriced wedding cake your friends shoved me into. I've already started packing up your stuff. Maybe you can use some of those empty beer boxes lying around. What? That's crazy. You can't do that when we just move in together. Besides, I already ended my lease at my old apartment. I have nowhere to go now. Marisa, you can't leave me on the curb like yesterday's trash. I can. And I will. Maybe one of those drinking buddies of yours will let you crash with them. You spend more time with them than you do with me anyway. You can tell them all about how their prank and your reaction to it was the straw that broke the camel's back. You're being so petty right now. This is embarrassing for the both of us. Think about what everyone will say. We just got married and now we're breaking up? What a scandal. Hey, now you know how I feel. A thousand dollar cake wasted. Smeared all over a thousand dollar dress. And let's not forget the humiliation of being the laughing stock of the entire reception hall. Suddenly you care about being embarrassed? Okay, okay. I get it. I didn't think about how expensive everything was in the heat of the moment. It was stupid of them to do that. And I should have stopped them. Uh-huh. And here I thought you were the life of the party. The one everyone was looking to for a good time. Suddenly, you weren't in control? I apologize on their behalf. Happy? What? Is that all you have to say? Happy? Like this is some trivial disagreement we can just sweep under the rug? No, no, I do mean it. I'm so, so sorry about it. I appreciate that you care about my health and are worried about all the drinking, even if I don't agree with you completely. I'm sorry. I thought you were being petty before, but you're right. This is a big deal. I know I am. Unfortunately, it feels like you still don't understand what's going on here, George. You're just parroting back to me everything I've said and hoping it'll make things magically better. I'm sorry, but apologies don't erase actions. Until the end. If you really were sorry, you would have taken responsibility for your behavior from the start. You would have stopped your friends. And you wouldn't be more concerned about saving face than you are about how I feel. I'm really sorry. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I just think we'll both be really embarrassed if you break up right after we spent thousands of dollars on our wedding. Especially after all that money went to waste on the cake in your dress. Please, please use your thinking cap for another second. George, I can't go back to someone who let that happen to me. Nor can I be with someone who thinks that a social standing means more than treating their wife with respect. You're not the only one who's mad about the way the wedding went. There has to be something I can do to make you forgive me. I can apologize a million times, if you want. Apologies mean nothing if you're not understanding what you did wrong. I presented all of my issues to you before, and you've always written them off. Now you're only apologizing because I'm threatening to leave. Shameful. The only thing you can do at this point is pay for the damages to the venue, thanks to the cake incident and all the leftover wedding fees. Wait, I can't do that. Well, it's not exactly you. I got off the phone with your parents earlier, and they want to cover everything with the compensation fee for me is an apology for the complete humiliation I experienced at the hands of you and your friends. You'll be paying them back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I can't do that. I shouldn't have to pay my own parents for something that they already said they would cover. This isn't my problem. They offered and I accepted. If you really don't want to do it, maybe you should have considered my repeated concerns about your drinking habits. I can't believe you decided this without me. I shouldn't have to shell out my hard-earned cash because you can't take a little joke. Maybe they should be paying for you to take some anger management lessons. God, I'm gonna be out so much. I won't be able to hit the bar for months. Interesting that you suddenly care when it comes to alcohol. Whatever, George. 
Nothing that you can say at this point would sway me. I never had anger management, but you don't really mean that. You're just a sad, pathetic excuse for a person who only thinks about himself and his vices. Wow. So that's what you really think of me, huh? I can't believe I married you. I can't believe I married you, but here we are. Sometimes we make mistakes when we think we're in love. Maybe this will be a good lesson for you. George, spend more time thinking and less time drinking. I wish you luck with paying your parents back and finding a place to stay. Neither of those are my problem anymore. I don't ever want to see you or your buddies again. Understand? What? No! Bye, George. No, wait. Hold on. Marisa, I can explain. Sadly, this wasn't the last time I heard from my now ex-husband. George attempted to contact me often to the point that I had to block his phone number and all of his social media accounts. He then started to call me from his office phone, so I called the police and had them take him in for attempted stalking. I guess it did the trick, since he no longer shows up wasted and hammering at my front door. Every now and then I see posts about him on social media from our mutual friends. Already, he's now known around his office as Cake Guy, a nickname that will haunt him forever. It kept him from dating too, since everyone who knows him knows his story and is sure to tell potential girlfriends about what he did or didn't do. His parents certainly came through and took care of every fee that had been left unpaid. They even sent me an extra check as payment for the financial loss on the cake, the dress, and my sanity. I always liked them a lot more than George, to be honest. It's so sad to see a couple of that kind make a man so dismissive. I'm done with dating for now, but if the time comes once more, definitely going to do a better job of background checking the wedding guests. The groom, too.